So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing uh, really some typical failures uh, that you're gonna get on the BMW N54. Uh, I'm gonna reference a lot of my DIYs that I do have on this channel to help you guys uh, you know, with these things. These are very common BMW failed parts, mostly because there's either been recalls on them, uh, they've had multiple revisions of the same part to make it better because it keeps failing, all that in there and then those common error codes that you will most likely get with those failed parts. They're very common of course on the N54, but if you are looking into getting a 335i, a 135i, 535i, and other variant models that have the N54 on it, this video is gonna help you so that way uh, you can check on these things if you are trying to find one. In no typical order, let's go ahead and get this video started. out of the gate is the oil filter housing and oil cooler housing gasket. Now not all N54s had an oil cooler. They usually came on the sport package for that, but you're gonna definitely have an oil filter housing. Now the problem is, is that, you know, gaskets don't last forever, of course. You know, a rubber gasket is gonna fail over time. It's gonna get brittle and it's gonna get more so pinched to allow oil to leak out of there. It's gonna come all the way down the front of your engine block. So BMW designed that oil filter housing with a coolant channel right inside of there. So if you can imagine your gaskets being flattened, oil's leaking, therefore oil can contaminate your coolant. When I first changed mine out, I didn't have any contamination into my coolant. Luckily, it just started leaking down the front and taking care of it, and that gasket was pretty bad. Rolling into the next item you guys gotta make sure about is that when you have oil leaking down the front of your engine, you're gonna have the potential for your belt to slip off. Happens actually way too often. A lot of it's really tied to your maintenance because oil get on the belt, the belt's gonna slip off, and therefore your belt can actually be sucked in through your crank hub and gets all in your timing chain, cause engine failure, mostly because it's getting trapped up in your oil return. So it's getting all up in there. It's gonna starve the engine of, of oil. So very important with that. Now that also goes with your belt tensioner failing, you know, causing the belt to slip off because that fails. But a lot of times it's a lot of just normal maintenance. That's a maintenance thing. Now they do sell like crank seal covers so that way the belt can't penetrate within there so obviously there's options out there so next thing on the list your water pump now your water pump can fail outside of if there's oil in there because you know that can mess it up of course but typically what i've seen and also on my very own 335i they last around the 70 80 000 mile range as far as water pump goes they can still sometimes still work but just leak because there's a lot of plastic components on the water pump. So it can still be a working water pump, but it just leaks and you gotta replace it. I'm on my fourth water pump on my very same car. So they don't always last that period of time. Mine have cracked, mine have stopped working, more so have been cracking and just breaking just because of the plastics. Really good rule of thumb is that just keep an eye on any if any codes come up as far as water pump issues you know overheating stuff like that and you're filled with coolant and you have no leaks really want to keep an eye on that because you know that's very important just like with engine oil so you want to keep tabs on that definitely a lot of people uh, uh, forget sometimes is that they'll replace the water pump but they don't do the thermostat the thermostat is actually right in the same way Therefore, you know, it's just good to replace out. It's like a hundred bucks or so, you know, just to swap it out with a brand new one. You're all right there because it's all combined within that area. So just one thing that you want to add to your list to replace out. Next up is something that is very common with direct injection is that you're going to have carbon buildup on the top of your valves. Now, my very own car was terrible when I you know, opened it up. BMW recommends about every 40,000 miles, give or take 40, 50,000 miles, to clean the carbon deposits off the top of your valves. Now, some independent shops charge quite a bit, 
could be $500, could be $1,000, could be $1,500, depends on what they wanna charge. Some go way out, so that's why you gotta shop around. But what I did is I bought a you know do-it-yourself kit, and it was right before I started the channel, I went through and cleaned off my valves. And I have to tell you, what you'll see here is that they've never been done. And I did it at about 125,000 miles, and it was completely caked. With that carbon buildup, you're not getting the proper flow as far as you know with your car operating with that on there. I had a lot of hesitation. I'll link the kit that I used a long time ago. So next up is your valve cover and valve cover gasket. Now I replaced mine at 130,000 miles. I'll link my DIY here up above. But what's gonna happen is that either your valve cover is just gonna fail just because of age, and it's gonna crack, it's gonna leak oil. And then it goes with your gasket. Like I've talked about, the gasket starts getting flat. The most common place for it to leak is in that back left-hand corner, closer to the turbos, because that's just where so much heat is. That oil's gonna leak out of there, it's gonna go right down on your downpipes, and it's gonna burn. And you're gonna smell it all through your cabin. I've seen the valve cover gasket fail all different miles at 50,000 miles. 40,000 miles. So they've been all across the board, 70,000 miles. There's really not a really subset as far as mileage goes for it. They just fail. Another way to also check too, if it's not seeping out that back corner closest to the turbos, if you are doing a spark plug or coil change uh, here coming up on your N54, take a flashlight, take a little mirror, go around the spots just to see if you see any kind of uh, oil seepage. So that way uh, you can either say like, oh, I need to replace my valve cover because I have a crack because that's where it's leaking or it's just a valve cover gasket that you need to replace. Next up is BMW N54 injectors. Now these are very important because it's your fueling and they do fail because obviously that's why BMW has 12 revisions of this injector but i'm here to help with you guys if you you know know that you have yours leaking you, you know you need to replace them i do have a diy of when i replaced mine with index 12s take a look here above now i replaced mine in 2016 they were 700 dollars for all six index 12s i think they range about now 2800 to 3200 dollars for that Crazy difference in price. Mostly that was driven from BMW has already stopped doing their injector recalls based how long these cars have been on the road. So that's what drives up the price, of course, and that was the main deciding factor for that uh, based when I talked to BMW. All you have to do is take your engine cover off, look at your injectors, and you can actually see what index they are. This is a quick and easy look. If you're looking at an N54 uh, you know, for sale, you can even ask the owner. I'm sure they probably would tell you, yep, I replaced them. Or if you, know, you wanna check for yourself, it's an easy way to check so that way you have peace of mind that, hey, I got something that has some old injectors or have some newer injectors. Now, what you're gonna have if they start to fail, if you pull your spark plug out, you smell any kind of fuel on that end of that spark plug, that means your injector is slowly leaking. So it's a problem, you need to replace them because it's just gonna get worse, it's gonna cause misfires because you're adding that extra fuel in there. Now, what you're also gonna run into is you can either have injector-specific codes or fuel mixture codes. So there's 29E0 and 29E1. Now, before you start spending any kind of money, especially that kind of money on injectors, you need to do a full diagnostic to see if it really is the injectors. Also as good as, you know, if you are taking your car to get a pre-purchase inspection, so that way they can check to see if there's any faults on there as well. And it can give you some insight as far as, you know, hey, you know, you got, you got some fueling issues going on here. You gotta get this um, squared away. Really make sure to really look at that kind of stuff because I hate for you guys to buy an N54 and you have to drop about $3,000 just at injectors because these cars are coming down quite a bit in price and you know you wanna make sure that um, you're not buying an older BMW for a cheaper price, but you have to dump so much money into it to get it up and running. Next up is your high pressure fuel pump. Now BMW ran a 10 year, 120,000 mile warranty on the high pressure fuel pump because of you know people having long cranks, just stuttering, car shutting off. 2FBF, so that's gonna be our fuel pressure at injection. 
2FBE, fuel pressure after motor stop, 29DC, cylinder injection switch off, 29E2, fuel injection rail. You're gonna get some a possible misfire codes. And of course you're gonna get low pressure and high pressure fuel pump systems. Outside of codes, data logging is definitely key. So using a JB4 or even MHD, you can data log to see if your high pressure fuel pump is failing or not. It has a certain spectrum of PSI that it needs to reach to be able to make sure that it's running correctly. So just a simple data log can tell you exactly if it's failing or not. So get out there, do some data logging, check out my video if you have not seen that as you of yet. You also have issues with your low pressure fuel pump. Uh, that's obviously down in your gas tank. Uh, you know, so that has the option of failing as well. You're checking a lot of these things. You know, you want to have a good BMW diagnostic app. So, you know, I use Pro Tool. It's Android based. So outside of a great diagnostic tool that reads codes, it does coding as well. But you know, that's where you can go and check and see what codes are on a BMW. That so last up is your wastegate rattle and potentially getting a 30 FF code, which is a boost leak code. It's what every N54 owner dreads to having on their N54, whether it's at the stock eight PSI, 15 PSI, or 25 plus PSI, depending on whatever your setup is, sometimes it definitely does happen. BMW did do an eight year, 82,000 mile uh, warranty on the wastegates, just because of the wastegate rattle, not building boost, continuous boost leaks and stuff like that. With the age of just the N54 in general, uh, really that time period has you know, lapsed. Depending on what power you wanna push out of it, that will help decide you as far as what your next steps are. And guys, it's what my biggest thing I've always said here on my channel to you, you know, just helping you along in your journey, modifying your N54, making sure that all the maintenance is up to par, just doing all those things really make a great BMW uh, ownership. But what I've said since day one, as far as starting this channel, maintenance before modifications. I can't stress that enough. If you have maintenance items that you need to take care of, do not add any more mods. Your mods that you add will pull the weakness out of those failing or have already failed stock parts just that much more. So once you keep everything in check, make sure everything is good to go, then you will have a great experience as far as once you start modding, you know, cause your maintenance is all up to par. The N54 engine is definitely solid, no doubt about that. It's just all the parts surrounding it gave it a bad name. And what I'm here to help with you guys is share this knowledge to you, share the DIYs that I have here on the channel, really just kind of give you any and all help as far as to save you guys some money, whatever I can do to help, that is why I'm here. Here. And that is really why I started this channel so uh, that I can share my experiences uh, with you guys uh, along for the ride. Well, I'm here to help you with anything that you need as far as N54 wise. You know, let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section below. I appreciate all the support guys. A big thumbs up on today's video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, check out the tons of other BMW N54 videos that I have here on the channel trying to do as much as I can to really help you guys along for the ride. I will check you on the next video. Take care.